This is the FlashForge AD5X, finally a budget multi-material 3D printer that actually has a feature that the other ones are lacking, being able to print in flexible materials. This has been a long anticipated 3D printer that's finally about to start shipping, and it is at a really great price point. I do feel like price is a big thing on this printer because it is sliding in a lot cheaper than the competition. With most printers, I don't mention the price all that much, but with this one, I think that is the big standout feature is that it is at a really good budget price point. And for the next couple days, it is on sale. If you use the code PRIME25, you get $35 off this printer on their website to get it down to $369. I will have links in the description down below. Let's start with covering the specs of this printer to see what you get for that price point. It is a bit of a small build volume with only 220 millimeters in all the X, Y, and Z dimensions. It does come with this built-in multi-material system on the left here, so four spools mount directly to the printer, which does keep the entire package a bit more compact instead of needing a separate system sitting next to it like on the Bamboo or Creality systems. The print speed is also competitive on this printer. They list 600 millimeters per second, 20,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration. Those are more of marketing numbers. When it comes to actual print speeds, it's just very similar to other printers on the market right now. And the big feature here is being able to print TPU through the multi-material system here. On the other printers, they can print TPU, but you have to take off and bypass the multi-material system, whether it's the AMS or AMS Lite or CFS system with the Creality's. You have to disconnect the Bowden tube and externally mount the spool. This is TPU mounted and feeding directly through here. So you can print multi-material objects with TPU in, mixed in the middle there. And then when it comes to just plain printing TPU, it's actually really good at printing TPU. It's one of my better printers when it comes to this flexible material, which is awesome because that's kind of its standout feature. In the slicer, it's rated at 3.6 millimeters cubed per second flow rate, which is the same that Bamboo sets their H2D at for printing TPU. This does have a super easy to change nozzle, similar to the Bamboo A1. The heat sink opens up like that. The nozzles here are very easy to change and hopefully they'll come in at a very cheap price. One downside to this machine is what it's lacking when it comes to hardware. It, for one, isn't in an enclosure. It doesn't have a camera. It doesn't have an LED. It doesn't have a HEPA filter. But it has slots for all of these to be added on if you want them later on. So you, you can add the camera that they sell, you can add an LED light bar they sell, you can add an enclosure kit that they sell. You print the large part of the frame and they sell the acrylic panels that slot into that. Same with the HEPA filter here. There's slots built in for a HEPA air filtration system, but since it's an open air printer, you don't need that. But you could upgrade and add that on, which is a really great feature. So when it comes to hardware here, it is a little bit lacking, but you can add those nice upgrades whenever you want. Next up, we should talk about their slicer. I am using their FlashForge Orca slicer, and currently it's version 1.4.2. It is really nice that they're using Orca Slicer as the base. It's really easy to use. There's a lot of really great features, but since it is their own version, it is lacking a few niceties that are currently on Orca Slicer. The first one, there's no dark mode. That's a weird thing that I think they're missing there. Hopefully in a new update, they can easily add that on there, but it's very white and on my screen, it's just very bright and difficult to look at. The other weird issue, more of a functional thing, is that there's no material sync button on the prepare page. So when you load materials here on the printer, on the front screen here, you tell it what printer, what colors and materials you have loaded on there. Then in the slicer under the device tab, it is able to see exactly what you've told the printer is loaded on here. But then on the prepare page, you have to manually put those in yourself again. With Bamboo Slicer, Creality Slicer, there's a button there to be able to sync between the device page and the prepare page. But with this one, it just doesn't have it, or at least I haven't been able to find if that feature is there somewhere. So currently that is a bit of an annoyance, but hopefully they can just add that in a future update. So next let's cover how to actually use this machine. Say I want to print something out in this material. First off, you have to change the spool and it's really simple here. You just grab the spool you want to change and pull it out. Grab your new spool, get the filament out, slide it on, and then put the filament up through this gray box. It starts whirring, and then it will grab the filament. There we go. So it grabs the filament and extrudes it all the way up to a set point up here. 
Then on the screen here, we select material. We select, this is spool number four. Select edit. Filament type here is ABS. Change the color to white. Select OK. And we've changed the filament here. Next, we can select which thing we want to print. Say we want to print this cube. Enable IFS and leveling. Tell it to print. This one is compatible. These other ones are not compatible. It'll even tell you if one is not compatible here. And now it starts your print. Another nice feature that this printer has, it really feels like it's made to be put into a print farm because after the print is over, you can select OK or continue. If you select continue, it immediately starts reprinting that same file with that same filament. That is a, a similar feature as on most other printers, but say the Bamboo Lab printers, if you say reprint, it then takes you back to the model page. You have to click through a few screens before it actually reprints. It's fine, but this is just a really nice feature if you're printing a ton of things. I was printing out a ton of these multi-board parts, and so I just wanted a bunch of batches of this to print. I would wake up in the morning, come down here, take the prints off, press continue, walk away. That was as easy as it was. So it becomes really easy to batch process on this printer. So one question you might have is, why would you want a multi-material printer if I'm rarely gonna be printing multi-material objects? This creates a bunch of waste and extra time. But there's three big reasons that I like multi-material printers, even if I don't, am not printing multi-material. The first big one is automatic color switching. So say I wanna print this in blue, I put two blue spools here, and then if one filament runs out, it'll automatically switch to the next one. So it'll use pretty much all of a spool of filament all the way up until the next one uses it. The next one is how easy it is to change filaments. I already showed you how when you're done with a filament, you just pull it out of the printer because it automatically cuts the ends here. So maybe it's just because I'm a YouTuber and I'm printing a bunch of different colorful things. I change filaments fairly often. And the older method of printers where you have to manually tell it to retract filament, it's got to heat up, extrude and retract a little bit, and then you manually change filament. It's just a more manual process. This is super easy and way faster. And the third big benefit is being able to automatically change filaments per layer. So here's a great example of this is a multi-material print with a TPU sort of case around this book. So this was printed flat like this, printed a few layers of TPU, and then it changed filaments. So it'll create a poop or two, and then it printed in blue PLA for the rest of the print. Versus a full multi-material print, this needs to change every single layer to switch between the two colors. Or changing the color of a top layer of text to make it really pop is really easy to automatically do. You can manually do that on most printers in the slicer, being able to tell it to pause at a certain layer height. But this being able to automate it is a really nice feature that I often use. And the fourth benefit of multicolor printing is being able to print two different objects at the same time in different filaments. In the slicer, you can select print by objects instead of print by layer. So it prints one object in one color and then does a single filament change and then prints the second object. This is a super useful feature. Instead of needing to start two separate prints, I can print two different color things at the same time without wasting a bunch of filament. Now we can do a more detailed look at the prints that came off of this printer. I'm kind of surprised at the print quality for a printer of this price point. These two parts slide together really easily. That's great for tolerances here. Here's an example of printing TPU and PLA at the same time. So this book here was printed flat like this. This was a test with PLA and TPU and it didn't stick very well, so I did have to glue this part back together. But it's a really cool example here. This is PETG and seems to stick a lot better to TPU. This gives a firm base for blowing air through these bellows. Here's a squishy TPU tire for the Open RC F1 car. This is, this is printed separately. The rim does come off of the tire. This is really useful for being able to change out your tires, whether you want knobbly tires or slicks. Next up, we got the classic Benchy. And the print quality here is another really good one. Some minor surface artifacts, but this is a sub $400 multi-material printer. I did do a lot of multi-board batch printing. A lot of these drawers I printed out with this machine because it's so easy to just press continue and print out a lot of parts. The multi-board system does have pretty easy tolerances, but everything fits together really nicely that came off of this printer. So here's an example of why I don't print very much multicolor. This is an Orca Slicer Cube 
done in two different colors. The G-code came preloaded on the printer. It's cool, it's got two different parts that screw together to test your tolerances, but this is how much waste it produced to create this one little cube. This is why I don't print very much full multicolored prints, because it produced so much waste to just create a little cube, and it also took several hours instead of this one took 30 minutes to print. And here's an example of silk PLA. This is gonna show off any ringing or surface defects in a worst case scenario. So it still does have a little bit of ringing and maybe I could have tuned it out. And then here's a large base mode print. This one has a really good surface finish here. Base mode I think really shows off how good an extruder is. And this one is very consistent all the way around. So overall, really good print quality and good tolerances on this printer. I wouldn't say it's the best surface quality I've ever seen on a 3D printer, but it does compete with printers much more expensive than it. Next up, we should cover the competition and what other multi-material printers are out there. First off, we've got the Creality High at $449. That one is a bit bigger at 260 millimeters by 260 millimeters by a lot larger 350 millimeters in the Z axis. For bamboo, there's the Bamboo A1 combo at $479. That one has a build volume of 256 in every dimension. Then the cheaper bamboo printer, the Bamboo A1 Mini, is a similar price point here, actually undercutting it by $10 currently, but it does come with a much smaller build volume with only 180 millimeters in every dimension. Another printer to talk about is the cheaper version of this printer, the AD5M. It's a very similar looking printer, but it is a very different printer. I think it uses almost the identical chassis here, the same screen on the front, but it doesn't have the multi-material system on there. It's a different hot end, it's a different motherboard. You can't upgrade the AD5M to the multi-material system since it is so different. So to sum it all up, I really like this 3D printer. It's a great budget multi-material 3D printer that's one of the better printers out there at printing flexible materials. And it's the only one that can print it through a multi-material system. It's not the cheapest multi-material printer out there because the Bamboo A1 Mini is out there, and that is a really great printer. This one does give you a nice upgrade path forward, but you're never gonna be able to expand beyond four spools feeding into this printer. But even with a few downsides that this printer has, I'm still gonna keep it around because it can do something that other printers can't when with printing flexible materials. But anyway, that just about wraps it up. Let me know if you have any more questions or things I forgot to cover about this machine. I might have covered it in a YouTube short, you can be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those. I will have a few affiliate links and coupon codes in the description down below, so if you are planning on shopping for a Flash Forge machine, those might be able to help you out and save you a couple bucks. As always, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.